Your screening data can show you where students need help, but how can you use those screening data to form effective small groups? I'm Stephanie, and I support educators to learn about and implement the science of reading. So in this video, I'm going to share examples of how you might use screening data in grades three through six to form initial small groups for your instruction in the regular classroom in tier one, and also for intervention support at tiers two and three. The kinds of screening data that I think are most useful are those direct measures where you're sitting one-on-one -on -one with a student and you're indicating those essential early literacy skills. In grades three through six, this really involves having an oral reading fluency assessment. So you can find free oral reading fluency assessments that are very nicely designed from Acadiance Reading and with Dibble's eighth edition. You'll also find good direct curriculum-based measures with screening tools like FastBridge and um, some of the other computer adaptive assessments are now starting to create these direct assessments as well. So curriculum-based measure like oral reading fluency has scores for accuracy, words correct, what some people call fluency, and Acadiance has an additional score for ORF called retail. So I'm going to be walking through, using Acadiance as an example, how you could use that initial screening information to sort students into groups at the beginning, middle, or end of the school year. In grades three through six, sorting students into initial groups really relies on that accuracy score. So if your ORF measure doesn't calculate accuracy, you should calculate it anyway. So whether you are sitting with a stack of paper scoring forms or you're looking at a spreadsheet or some kind of a report, the first step might be to organize your class or grade level based on that ORF accuracy score. So sorting from high to low, organizing it based on how students scored on text reading accuracy on ORF. There are four basic groups that I think will get you started with targeting instruction at what students need. So the first group, the first pattern that you want to look for are the students who are meeting expectation, maybe that's a benchmark goal, hopefully, uh, at or above benchmark for the ORF accuracy score and for the ORF words correct score and for the ORF retail score. So you're looking for students who are scoring on track on the accuracy score, and then also looking over to the next column or looking at the next uh, score for that measure to see how they scored on words correct and on retail. And all three of those scores would need to be in place uh, at or above benchmark to put that student into what I'm gonna call group one. So if you find a student with the pattern I described, let's call them student A, they're going to go into group one, and we're going to call this our on-track group of students or our reading comprehension and writing group. So that's how we will refer to group one. The second pattern that you wanna look for are the students who are accurate at or above benchmark on ORF accuracy, also at or above benchmark on ORF words correct, but not at benchmark. So they are scoring below or well below benchmark for the ORF retail score. These students, uh, like student B here, are ones who are going to go into a different small group. These are students that I might call um, group two or the comprehension group. The third pattern you wanna look for are students who are accurate on ORF. Uh, they have scored at or above benchmark on ORF accuracy, but they are not at benchmark for the ORF words correct score. So these students, I'm gonna say like student C fit this pattern, they're going to go into group three and I'm gonna call that group the fluency group. And then the most concerning pattern, these are the third through sixth grade students uh, like student D who are not scoring at or above benchmark for ORF accuracy. This is a real red flag. It's an indication that they don't have adequate word recognition skills, uh, not even at the accuracy level to support comprehension. 
So students like student D who have this pattern of not being at benchmark for ORF accuracy, ORF words correct, or or free tell, uh, they are going to go into group four, and I'm going to call that my decoding group. So let me just go back through uh, some of the big ideas here. These groups can be really useful for informing what you're doing in tier one, perhaps even differentiating your tier one or classroom reading instruction so that it can be targeted at each one of these needs. These groups are also helpful for intervention planning. So these initial sorts can start to give you a sense of uh, what kinds of skills students are going to need support on in intervention. The students uh, who ended up in groups two, three, and four who may need some intervention support. The other thing I think this grouping process is useful for is informing which students might you want to give a diagnostic to. So I'm going to call particular attention to students who I have put into my group two, like student B, who have a pattern of being accurate and fluent readers, but not demonstrating comprehension. So if you have a cadence reading as your screener, it's the or retail score that would indicate that. Uh, you might have other, other indications, other sources of data that would indicate that the student is not understanding grade level text. This is a group of students who we really want to do a diagnostic with to follow up on our screening data and specifically a language comprehension diagnostic for students with this pattern to go deeper into those language processes uh, like vocabulary, word knowledge, uh, syntax and morphology. You could use something like the Acadians reading CFAL, Comprehension, Fluency and Oral Language Diagnostic. The second group who I would recommend uh, using a diagnostic with are the students in group four. These students are not accurate in grade level text. A series of one minute screeners isn't going to uncover necessarily which phonics patterns they know and don't know. So you'll want to follow up screening with a word recognition diagnostic, something like the Acadians reading diagnostic for word reading and decoding, or other uh, diagnostics like the free ones from Really Great Reading or the Core Phonics Survey, those will let you go deeper into and uncover the exact phonics patterns that students in this group already know how to read instantly and are still needing to learn. Uh, so that will help you further uh, target your instruction, but also perhaps subdivide that fourth group. Uh, you really want those most struggling third through sixth grade students to be in the smallest possible groups in tier one, perhaps, but also in intervention. And having the diagnostic decoding data will let you do that further differentiation and targeting of their instruction. If you like this video, check out the first video in this series where I did a similar process for earlier elementary students. And make sure that you like the video and subscribe to Reading Science Academy so you can get more support like this for your work. Thanks for watching.